Hi, I'm DaVinci Resolve, and today I'm going to be answering some of the internet's most searched questions. I'm just kidding, it's me, hi. But I am still going to be answering some of the most searched DaVinci Resolve questions. Here's what I did. I went onto YouTube and I put in the search bar DaVinci Resolve how to, and I let autocorrect give me this list of 14 questions. Today, I'm going to answer all of them for you right now. Starting with number one, DaVinci Resolve, how to add text. I have a timeline open here with some footage already on a timeline and we are going to make sure our effects library is open here. I'm gonna to go to titles and right at the top, you have text and text plus. If you need something simple, especially a static text that doesn't move or change on screen, the default text effect can be great for you. The text plus effect leverages the power of the text plus node in the fusion page. It's super powerful, but it can be more confusing and definitely more taxing at times on your computer. Select either one of them, drag it onto your timeline right above your footage. It will create a second video track here. And you can uh, extend or decrease the length just by dragging the edge here. Select that effect and then over here in the inspector, you will have all of the controls for that text. Small note, DaVinci Resolve also has the capability for amazing text presets. There are some awesome creators and companies making entire packs of text presets. I've made one, 50 text presets available now, link in the description. But let's move on to question number two, how to export video. Here we have our timeline with just one clip of this gaming clip. I like full HD, normal 16 by nine aspect ratio. And to export, I'm coming down on our page menu down here to deliver. I'm gonna click that. And then here in this render settings window, I have all of these settings to customize how I export this video. You can go to custom for most control or choose some presets like YouTube, Vimeo, or Twitter. And some of these have some cool functionality like in the YouTube preset, you can automatically upload your video to YouTube as well and even create YouTube chapters from markers that you have placed in your timeline. If you're on the edit page, you can also go to file quick export and choose from a limited menu here. This could absolutely be useful. I never really use it. On the deliver page, choose the settings you want to use give your file a custom name and choose a location for that file. And then you can click this button to add to render queue. That will kick it over to this window on the other side of your screen where you can queue up as many videos and as many different file types as you want from any number of timelines. And when you're ready to export, you can just click this render all button. It will render your video. And if you happen to check this upload directly to YouTube box, which I did not mean to leave on, it will have uploaded this video to my YouTube channel as a private video, so no one will see it. Number three, how to add music. Here I have another timeline. I have my gameplay clip up here. And in my media pool, I have this music selection. I'm just gonna drag this down to the bottom section of my timeline viewer here, where I can either drop it on the existing track or drag it below to create a new track. From there, I can make sure my mixer window is open down here extend this out, and I have a custom fader for this track here on this audio two track. Additionally, you can zoom into this audio track, and if you mouse over your clip, you will see at one point your icon changes here, and you can either drag up or down to decrease or increase the volume of that track. Number four, DaVinci Resolve, how to download. You can get DaVinci Resolve by going to the official main Blackmagic Design website. There will probably be a tile right on the homepage or just slash DaVinci Resolve for the full product page. And first thing you will see, DaVinci Resolve free download now. Click that and it will give you this prompt to download either DaVinci Resolve or DaVinci Resolve Studio. DaVinci Resolve 17 is free. DaVinci Resolve Studio is that pro tier with selected extras, especially if you are just getting started. The free version is phenomenally full featured, but there are absolutely perks to getting the studio when you're ready for it. Select your operating system and fill out the quick form and that will get you a download link where you can download and install. If you want to use DaVinci Resolve Studio, pay for it which now you can conveniently do from the Black Magic Design website. You didn't used to be able to do this. They will just email you an activation code. If you're not ready for studio or you can't afford it, that's cool. Use the free version. When you are ready to make that jump, purchase a license from DaVinci Resolve or one of their resellers. Number five, how to zoom in. There are a couple cool options here. If you are talking about just a static change in scale with the inspector open, you can pull up this zoom number or you can click this button beneath the viewer to give you these sort of tactile controls where you can just drag to increase and then reposition your clip. If you want your clip to change over time, you can either select your clip in the inspector on that zoom, set a keyframe, 
come forward, pull up that zoom, and then it will execute that move according to the timing of the keyframes. Or you can scroll down to dynamic zoom, toggle that on and over the course of the entire clip, by default, it will zoom out just a little bit. You can swap these and it will zoom in just a little bit. And next to this toggle for transform options, if you change this to dynamic zoom, you can see bars for where the zoom is starting and stopping. If I grab this red bar and pull it in and drag this right down to the mini map, toggle those controls off, then it will start full screen and over the course of the clip, zoom in right to that mini map. Number six, how to add image over video. If you have your image in the media pool, just like we did with audio, you can drag that image, pull it onto your timeline. If you drag that, it'll automatically create a second video layer. And then if you want to reposition that at all, you can toggle back on these controls, shrink, scale, rotate, however you want for whatever you're trying to go for. Number seven, how to freeze frame. I have this video clip here. And if I scale and search for a moment, I want to freeze frame, say right when I get the kill on this guy, I can zoom into the timeline. And in my inspector, if I come down to speed change under direction, the third option is this snowflake. If I click that button, it will cut the clip and at that head, it will just freeze that frame. If you would like to freeze frame for a certain amount of time, then before you click that button, you can go and just cut your clip right at the point, either by selecting the blade edit mode by default with B and clicking on your clip. I have split clip set as S on mine. And then if we just go back one frame and click that snowflake, now we just have a single frame freeze frame. But if I go into trim edit mode with T, then I can just extend this freeze frame out for as long as I want it to be. The motion will be playing, it will freeze frame and then it will continue on. Number eight, how to copy and paste color grading. We have jumped over to the color page here where I have two clips. One of them, I have this fairly exaggerated color grade on. You can see it compared to just the normal color of the clip. And that color grade is just on this single node here. Note, I am not a colorist. I use the color page as needed. I have a very base level understanding of the tools, but I'm sure especially in color management and handling all my nodes, I don't do that correctly. But that's not what this question is about. If you have a grade on one clip you like, you can just select another clip or any number of clips. And if you middle mouse button click on the clip with the grade you like, it will copy over the grade from that clip. You can see it right here in the node viewer. And now your two clips are perfectly synced. Number nine, how to download free. See number four. Number 10, how to add subtitles. Now by this question, some people could just mean text on screen. Like you see that is really popular now, especially in like short form videos like shorts or TikTok. You can use the native text tools like I showed off earlier, but DaVinci Resolve also has a uh, full actual subtitle support. If you right click above your video tracks, you can add a subtitle track. That will create a separate little window up here and say I was talking along or if there was narration over this video. If you click in the subtitle window, your inspector will change to give you this subtitle control with caption window here. And at any point, you can click create caption. And it'll give you a little text down here and you can be like, hello, welcome to my video. And you could sync that to the person talking, at which point if they got to their next line, you could click add new and it would create a new line and you could manually create subtitles as you go here. You can also jump over to style and change things like the font, the size, and even things like a blue background box that does dynamically scale, scale to the text. These subtitles will stay in this window and when you are ready to export, you can come over to deliver where in the custom export settings, you have subtitle settings down here. You can click export subtitles and choose from a host of options like saving these as a separate file or burning right into the video or embedded captions and a host of formats as well. Number 11, how to speed up clips. It's just like our freeze frame question from earlier, in the inspect and under speed change, you have a number of options. Right off the bat, you have speed. If I am over a clip or I have that clip selected, if I pull up this speed, it will change the speed of that clip accordingly. An important setting to note is this ripple timeline option. If you've already selected the in and out points for a clip you know you want to change the speed of, then just select ripple timeline and as you pull that speed up, the clip will shrink accordingly. Additionally, if you right click directly on a clip, you also have options for change clip speed, which give you some similar settings. And if you want to animate any of these speed changes, you have retime controls and your retime curve. If you change this little drop down from retime frame to retime speed, then you could drop a keyframe where on one side of the keyframe, you could crank up the speed and then so it's going much faster and then at the keyframe, 
boom, it comes back, plays full time. And you could even add some easing by pressing this little button here. So it's going really fast and then eases down into real time. And then if you wanted, you could set another keyframe and go back up too fast. Yeah. Number 12, how to slow motion. Pretty much everything I just said, but the opposite. You can always drag this down to be below 100 and then it will be in slow motion. If you drag the speed to below zero, it will go negative. Your direction will actually play backwards and the entire video will play backwards. Number 13, how to crop video. In the inspector underneath transform, you have cropping controls where you can crop each side of your video and even add a little soft blur to them. Additionally, just like transform underneath the viewer in this drop down menu, uh, you have tactile controls for this crop where you can just drag in the edges or the corner and this will actually crop the video. Then you could go back to transform, move this around wherever you want. And number 14, how to separate audio from video. By default, your clips should be linked here. You can toggle off linking for all clips by unchecking this little icon linked selection. You have the keyboard shortcut there if you like it as well. Then your video clips can move independently. You do have this little, little pop-up red bar here to tell you that they are linked. If you toggle this back on, then they will move together. Additionally, even if you have linked selection on, you can always click Control Alt and select any individual clip and it will move that clip independently. Or if you have multiple clips you want to keep linked, but just one you want to unlink, you can right click on any and uncheck linked clips and it will treat the audio and sound like completely separate sources. You see you no longer get that little error pop up there. And hey, some of the most asked DaVinci Resolve questions answered uh, as quickly as I could manage. Especially if you are new to Resolve, I hope this video was helpful. I am sure I will be uh, sending it and recommending it a fair amount as people ask questions. What other questions do you have about DaVinci Resolve? Leave them below, I would love to answer them. And hey, if you're interested in Resolve, that's what I talk about on this channel, especially some cool stuff in the Fusion page. I talked about my text pack, I have a transition pack. There's cool stuff going on. I have recently given away a pack of all the free stuff I have made so far. You can download it for free, install it with one click, and uh, get working with some pretty cool stuff. That's all available for you. Click around, you might find something you like. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.